Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSE. This lesson, Household Electricity Part 2, AC versus DC. This topic was requested by Isaac Shelton, Queen Kylie, Krev M, Nujoma, Chloe Botton, Cerebral Assassin, Thembe Moyo, Russell Chings, Charlton Home Days, Alan Phillip and Nishu Garung. Thanks guys! If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Most of the time at GCSE when we're talking about power supplies, we're talking about DC power supplies. That's direct current supplies. These are the sorts of supplies which you're most used to, where the electricity flows out of one side of the supply, around the circuit and back into the other side of the supply. Batteries and cells are exactly this sort of supply. However, you do need to know a little bit about AC supplies as well. This is alternating current. And this is a supply that flows back and forth around the circuit, delivering energy to devices such as heating elements or motors. So for example, this hairdryer contains both a heating element and a motor, and it runs on an AC supply. If it's hard to picture what the electricity is doing in each case, allow me to give you an analogy. We'll start with DC. That's rather like a river. A river flowing in one direction all the time, from high gravitational potential, where it's high up in the hills, to low gravitational potential as it flows down valleys towards the ocean. And we can put water wheels in the way of this to harness the energy as it's flowing. So we can put a device that captures the energy which that current is carrying as it flows from the higher potential to the lower potential. Now with AC, it's a little bit different. It's more like something that's there to harness the power of the tide. Remember, as the tide goes in and out, we could build things like tidal barrages, which will capture the energy of that tide. That's what AC is like. The only real difference between that and a tidal barrage is the tidal barrage is going to be capturing the energy as the tide goes in and out relatively slowly over the course of a day. Whereas an AC supply, that will be flowing back and forth several times a second. So we could use either AC or DC to power the components in a circuit. So why use AC? Well, actually, it turns out there's a couple of really good reasons. Firstly, it's a lot easier to generate an alternating current. If you've got a rotating generator, then that is very easy to set up to produce that alternating current. You can convert it to DC, but that's quite fiddly and difficult to do. It's really easy to set up a generator, even a very simple generator, that generates AC though. And the other reason is it's also easy to transform the potential difference or the voltage. It's easy to step it up and step it back down. This means that we can increase that potential difference or increase that voltage to very, very high potentials, 400,000 volts or more, which makes transmission of the electricity far more efficient. We waste a lot less energy when we transmit that electricity. If you'd like to know more about how we transform electricity, please check out my video on transformers where I explain it in more detail. But the key things you need to know are it's much easier to generate AC and it's much easier to transmit it efficiently because it's easier to transform that potential difference. Because an AC supply is flowing back and forth around a circuit, it's got a frequency, just like a wave, which we measure in hertz. That's the number of times it flows back and forth each second. So if it flows back and forth once a second, that's one hertz, twice a second, that's two hertz, and so on. Now the actual frequency varies from country to country. They're all roughly similar, but there is some variation. You do need to know what the potential difference and the frequency in the UK is if you're sitting a GCSE in the UK. The potential difference is 230 volts. Now that's actually approximate. It can be a little bit over that or a little bit under that, but it's generally stated as 230 volts and the frequency is 50 hertz. You do need to know both of these numbers for your GCSEs. The final thing you need to know about AC and DC is how to identify each of them on an oscilloscope trace like this one. I'm not going to cover how to interpret an oscilloscope trace in detail in this video, I'll cover that in a future video, but for now what you do need to know about this is that this is basically a graph of potential difference against time and the horizontal axis is time, so the vertical axis is potential difference or voltage. Now let's focus on line A for a start, the pink line. 
This line, its value isn't changing over time. It's always got that positive potential difference and it stays the same. So this is a potential difference which is always going the same way round the circuit. This is our DC supply. Whereas line B, the green line, that is constantly changing. It's positive and then it's negative and then it's positive again. So this one is our alternating current. As it flows back and forth around the circuit, we get a trace which goes positive and negative on the oscilloscope. Now we could also identify exactly what the frequency of the supply is from this oscilloscope trace and that is one of the things that I'll cover in the future video when I explain how to interpret this type of trace. I hope that video really helped you. To see what else I can help you with, there's lots more videos to check out on my channel. Scroll down the main page there to see I've already sorted them into playlists to help you find the video you need. You can also check out my revision guides which cover everything you need to know for the exam. They feature links to my videos, revision tips, cover both foundation and higher tier, and unlike a lot of revision guides, they also point out what you don't need to waste time learning. If you want to check your learning, try the SnapQuiz website and app, which allow you to identify which areas you need to spend the most time learning. Remember, this is the only YouTube channel which brings you the teachers, the textbooks and the tests all on your terms, on mobile phone, tablet or computer for you to revise when you want and how you want, even immediately before you go into the exam. All of these links and any others for this video will be down in the description. Lastly, it really does help my channel if you want to leave your likes, if you subscribe, or, if you know someone else who's having trouble, tell them to search for Mr Thornton. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.